Operator, do you read me now? Hello. Uh, operator, will you stand by? Thank you. They're asking us to stand by for one minute. We all heard this. Commander right. Carpenter should be on in about uh, 30 or 40 seconds. I'll Thank notify you. you when I get him. Uh, all right. Uh, Scott, we have a long-distance call for you. Will you hold, please? Operator, this is Commander Carpenter on the line. Thank you. Uh, hello, Commander Carpenter. Scott? Yes. Can you hear me, Operator? Yes, we can. Now, Scott, will you speak, please? Yes. How do you hear me, Operator? Uh, not too well, sir. Uh, ma'am, uh, do you think it's possible to hear our teleprompter connection? Well, I don't know, sir. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. How do you hear that, Operator? I understand you. Yes. But that's weak, I see. So, uh, better. Yes. Oh, we can't hear him. Is he... Uh, is uh, this Operator. something we can do for a connection? All right. One, two, three, four, five. How now, operator? Yes, we can understand you. Can you, ma'am? No. Uh, well, he says that's the best he can do. Uh, All right. Uh, uh... I will assume that there's hardly any need to put the call here if, uh... I'll bet we wouldn't be able to understand. It's all garbled. Well, you bear in mind, operator, that my voice will sound quite uh, different. I'm in a chamber with a uh, helium atmosphere, so the frequency of my voice is quite high. Yes, it is. Uh, that is not a telephone connection problem. That's just the uh, result of uh, my speaking from a pressurized chamber uh, in a helium atmosphere. Do you understand? Astronaut Cooper, are you able to understand me, over? Uh, yes, ma'am. This is Astronaut Carpenter, not Astronaut Cooper, however. Did you understand that? I think the operator just can't understand your helium voice, but uh, you sound very loud to me. And I just well, checked on... to us, sir, it's very garbled, and we have to have a clear connection for the president. Uh, operator, this is helium speech. It will always be garbled, but I'm sure it will be understandable. The president knows that it is gar a hu helium speech. You think it's all right to put it through? I would say it is all right. He understands that uh, Commander Carpenter is in a synthetic gas a atmosphere. I would try it through. He, he's in a what atmosphere? A synthetic gas atmosphere, using helium instead of air. That causes the human voice to be very garbled, but I think the president will understand. Operator? Yes. What's the, what, uh, he said a synthetic what? Uh, Synthetic helium gas. Atmosphere. Yes, and it makes his voice sound garbled and real high pitched. Oh, I see. Okay, well, then we'll try it. Is he got a call on the line now, Operator? Yes, he's got a Scott, I wonder if anybody understands this. Well, I don't know. The operator said that she knew uh, what I was uh, trying to tell her, but apparently she didn't. Oh. Well, we we'll just sit tight and see. All right. Thank you, sir. Scott, do you read me all right? Yes, sir, Mr. President. Will you loud and clear? How me? Fine. Well, Scott, I'm mighty glad to hear from you. You've convinced me and all the nation that whether you're going up or down, you have the courage and the skill to do a fine job. Well, thank you very much. There were a lot of other people who demonstrated the same kind of uh, courage. It's a great crew out here. And we're all very honored and pleased that you saw fit to call us and uh, let us know that uh, you were interested in what we're doing. I know that being 205 feet underwater for 30 days and making the excursion dives that you did uh, has been very valuable to us and advanced our knowledge of how humans can perform under these conditions. And I want you to know that the nation's very proud of you. You're very brave and skillful, and I'm grateful that you've successfully completed this experiment. Well, thank you very much, sir, on behalf of all the crew and all of those who participated in Sea Lab. 